Algebra 1, Lesson 25, Differentiating Between Relations and Functions. How many of us are familiar with this? We, we know what a function is. We know what a relation is. All right, one or two. All right, so the domain. Uh, let's make sure that we understand some terminology first when we ask for the domain. Uh, a domain can refer, it, there are three things that all, they're all the same thing, but we use different terms to mean those things. So domain, x values, and inputs all mean the same thing. Okay? Does that make sense? So if I'm looking at a table of data and they say, show me the inputs, they're talking about all the x values. We understand x values probably most of all. Uh, inputs maybe next in line on things that we understand. Uh, domain might be something that's kind of out there. How many of you knew what a domain was whenever we brought it up? Nobody in here knew, one, one person in here knew what a domain was. Okay, so domain is my set of all, all my x values for my relation, okay? All right, range. Range, range gets used a little bit differently. Uh, we can talk about a range of values, but if I'm asking for the range of a set of data, what we're asking for is the y values or the outputs, okay? How many of us knew what an output is? Okay, a few more hands go up. Output is what we get after we have input a value for x. Okay, so if I have an equation, a lot like our slope-intercept form of an equation, you know, if we say y equals 2x plus 3, right, and I go through and I got a table of values, right, I'm going to put, you know, 0, 1, 2, 3 in for my x, and I'm going to get outputs, which is going to give me my y values. My domain is those x values, 0, 1, 2, and 3. My range are my output values, what I get when I plug in 0, 1, 2, and 3 for x. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. So a relation, then, is not, uh, not somebody that you meet at a uh, family reunion. Okay. Uh, at least not mathematically speaking. A relation is a set of ordered pairs where each number in the domain is matched to one or more numbers in the range. So again, it's a table of values where I'm seeing uh, my relation is seeing what the numbers look like across. It's my ordered pairs. Okay, Whenever I set them up, my relation is the ordered pairs that I get. So for this input, I get that output. Those two numbers together, those x and y numbers together, constitute a relation. All of the set of data is put together there. Okay. Relations can also be represented using set notation, tables, diagrams, or equations. So there's a lot of different ways to look at relations. A function is a more specific type of relation. Um, all functions are relations, not all relations are functions. Does that make sense? Okay. A function is a mathematical relationship where the pairing of each domain has exactly one value in the range. Exactly one value. Meaning that if I plug in a value for x, I should get a unique value for y. If I get more than one value for my x, if there's more than one y for an x, it's not a function. Okay, are you following me here? I know that this is math and I know we're bored, right? It's early in the day, you know, you're thinking, man, I wish this class was like, you know, right around lunch or something, but it's not. So try to stick with me here. All right, so if a relation is graphed on a coordinate grid, the vertical line test can be used to determine if my relation is a function, okay? So we have two relations up here. Only one of these is a function, okay? Uh, and there's all kinds of different graphs that we can draw. There's all kinds of different uh, functions are going to look different. Not all functions are the same or graph the same. Um, but a graph on the coordinate plane represents a function if any vertical line intersects the graph in exactly one point. All right, so my vertical line there is being represented by the red line, okay? My function, or sorry, my relation is the blue line. All right, so looking at this first graph over here on the left, is that a relation or a function? It's a relation. Why is it a relation? Somebody besides Tiffany, just so I know that everybody else's brains are still functioning today. Christian, can you tell me why that is a relation? She's not wrong, but can you tell me why?
look at the definition directly below vertical line test. Right, I know you don't have a Chromebook, but I'm, I'm thinking that the, the print is big enough you can see from where you're at. What do you think? It's a relation. She said it's a relation. It's not a function. Why is it not a function? There we go. What what cuts the graph in more than one place? Not the blue line. The blue line isn't cutting the red line. Think of it. Flip it. I guess you could look at it that way, but my relation is the blue line. My vertical line is the red line. The red line is my test. Okay? Because my vertical line intersects my relation in more than one place, right? Really, I think that this chart still exists in your book, so all you really need to do is just read the relation is not a function, the vertical line cuts the graph in more than one place, right? I think that exact same wording shows up in your book, okay? So because I intersect twice, it's not a function, all right? So we should be able to see, I think we could all read, so you could just cheat, right? If you wanted to, you could just look at the answer, but is graph number two a relation or a function? Anthony, it's a what? It's a, you, okay. You, it is a relation, but is it also a function or just a relation? Also a function. How do I know it's a function? It intersects only once with what? With the vertical line, right? Because that, that's not always going to be a red line, just BT dubs, okay? All right, so do we know how we can test a graph to see if it's a function or not? Yes, hopefully. Okay. All right, and there's a reason. Um, let's see. If we look at a table of data, right? I'm gonna make. I'm gonna make two sets of data. You tell me which one is a relation, which one is a function. Okay. Let's say I got uh, zero, one, one, two, three. I got uh, zero, one, two, three, four. Okay, let's do negative three, um, let's see, five, seven, nine, thirteen. Okay, over here, let's do negative six, negative five, negative four, negative four, seven. Can you tell me which one of those, by the table of data, which one is a relation, just a relation, and which one is a relation but is also a function? Somebody besides Tiffany. I'm not going to let Tiffany answer any more questions today. The rest of this class falls on you guys because she has done all the heavy lifting for weeks. Peyton, can you tell me anything about the table of, tables up here? The one on the left? Is it a function or just a relation? Just a relation. Do you know why? Because that, that could have been an easy guess, but why? It's a, okay, so you think it's just a relation because all the y values are different. No, it's not quite it. You are correct. It is a relation, and it is just a relation. But we have to know for the right reasons, otherwise we're not going to get these right consistently. And what we want is consistency. Jeremy? Okay, there's two ones. Um, that's not necessarily the problem. You are correct that that is an indicator that there is a problem here. Having two ones is not the problem, okay? But the problem is connected with the ones. Anthony, Tiffany, you just keep your hand down. Anthony, what do you think? 
Don't know. Okay, I just thought you had your hand raised. Jer or, uh, sorry, blatant. They don't have the same y value. All right, so one is one. One is, uh, one is an x value. One is an input, right? But notice that one has two separate outputs, okay? Which means this. It means that if I were to graph 1, 5, and 1, 7, right? So my x value is 1. My y value is, let's say, 5. My x value is 1. My y value is 7. What has happened here? Will that pass? When I, will that pass a vertical line test? No. It inherently fails the vertical line test every time because if I have a single x input in two separate y inputs, it by definition creates a vertical line, therefore cannot pass the vertical line test. Correct? So if I go over here, notice that I had two different outputs, or I had the same output for two different inputs. Well, that doesn't really matter, okay? Because if I go to graph those, right, I've got uh, one, or sorry, two, negative four, and three, negative four. Well, I draw a line through there, but will that pass the vertical line test? Yes, right? I can draw a vertical line. It's only going to connect with it once. So a horizontal line, right, I can have as many uh, of the same y values as will work, okay, that's not going to hurt my vertical line, right? Okay, but if I have two outputs for the same input, it cannot be a function. It will fail the vertical line test. Hopefully, that helps that make a little bit more sense. So, in a function, an independent variable determines the value of the dependent variable, okay? So, if I have something like y equals f of x, Let's say for, you know, those two things do equal each other. Um, we can also write that as y equals 6x plus 3 or f of x equals 6x plus 3. But whatever I plug in for x is going to affect what I get for y. Okay? Y is dependent upon x. That's another, I think, uh, another definition I haven't given you. The dependent variable is the y. So if we look at things that y... Uh, things that are all the same. We have y values, uh, dependent variable, okay, um, output, and range are all referring to the same thing. Okay, does that make sense? So we have four different terms that all reference the same thing. X values, independent variable, okay, input, and domain. I'll refer essentially to the same things, okay? So it's important that you understand that. All right, so let's look and see if we can't answer some questions. Okay. Uh, question number one. Nora buys a case of 75 tea bags for her family. They use five bags a day. Which function can she use to find the number of tea bags remaining on any given day? Okay, well, we know we're going to get F of D, right? D ref uh, referencing days. So we should know that D for days, days equals what? Hmm? No. Hmm? You don't know the answer yet? Well, there's, f you, you think none are, none are correct? We want to find out how many tea bags we're going to have on any given day. Well, what are we starting with? 75. Okay, so can we at least put a 75 here? Okay. Minus 5 times the number of days. Okay. So what's my answer? A. Okay. 
some of you all are going to have to step up and start putting yourself out there. I'm just going to start calling on people. And if you think, well, hey, I don't like that. You know, I don't like him picking on me. All right. Well, then speak up when you know the answer so that I'm not picking on you when you don't know the answer. All right? You you're guys are in high school now, okay? You can't hide. I will pick on you. I'm not going to bully you, but I need to know what you know and what you don't know. All right? I can't always hear from somebody that knows. That's not going to help. So Mean is buying tulip bulbs that cost 80 cents each. Uh, he has $16 to spend. Which rule can Mean use to find the amount of change he will receive if he buys in tulip bulbs? All right, so we're starting off with F of N. Okay. How much money does he have to spend? 16. All right, he's got 16 bucks. What are we going to, let, let's think about this in a real world sense, okay? Let's worry a little bit less about the equation for a second and try to see if we could determine if we were in this situation, how would we do this? Okay, I've got 16 bucks in my pocket, okay? Each tulip bulb costs 80 cents, right? So if I buy one tulip bulb, that's 80 cents. Two tulip bulbs, that's $1.60, right? So I should understand that 80 cents is going to be, is that going to be divided by N or multiplied by N? Multiplied, okay? So every time I buy another one, it multiplies the 80, right? The 80 cents, okay? So for instance, let's say that I bought five of them, right? What am I going to, what am I going to do with that 80 cents? I'm going to multiply it by five, okay? So I've got that, okay? Now what do I do with that number, whatever it is, from the $16 that I have in my pocket? I subtract it from it, correct? Okay, so we know that we're going to multiply and we know that we're going to subtract. Which one of these shows that correctly? A, it's almost exactly the same type of question, right? Right, it's really not any different. Okay, 16 minus 80 times n. Okay, what is the range of the relation? So up here it shows me my values. Um, is is 4 an x or a y? 5 is a, 2 is a, 9 is a, 1 is a, 8 is a, 6 is a, 5 is a, 2 is a, 9 is a, Good. Okay. So we've got that much. And I know that may seem like, you know, okay, he's treating us like little, little kids, but you wouldn't believe how many people don't know where the X value goes and where the Y value goes. Okay. So range refers to what value? Is that X or Y? Crickets. I feel like I just wrote this on the board in like big red print. What? Okay. I see some people mouthing it. Um, McEwen, what do you think? Y values. Okay. Am I going to order, let's order those Y values from least to greatest. All right. What is my smallest Y value? Five. Okay. What's the next biggest Y value? Okay. But we're not going to repeat. Okay. So what's the next biggest Y value? Eight. What's the next biggest Y value? Nine. So which answer is my answer? A, good. Okay, just in case somebody's watching the video without the sound, that's the answer right there. Okay, all right. Number four, notice we have a table of values this time. We want to know the domain and range. All right, who can tell me the domain of this from least to greatest? Jordan, thank you. Okay. Okay, he said negative 6, 0, 1, and 8. That is absolutely correct. All right. Uh, Mia, what is the range from least to greatest? Okay, she said negative 11, 0, 3, and 17. How many of us agree? All of us agree. Very good. Our answer is what? It should be... Domain. Okay, so we got, yeah, 
Yeah. So B doesn't have a zero, does it? Okay, it's missing a zero in both cases. Otherwise, uh, B would look correct. I believe it is C. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Determine if it is. Oh, hold on. No, we got this one. Okay, a little different. Is this a relation, a function? Uh, Caden, is this relation a function? On number five. Yes. Can you tell me why? You're close. You're almost there. Finish it off. There's no X that has that has two Ys. That is exactly right. Thank you. And one of the best indicators is that there are no Xs that repeat. So by definition, I can't have an X with two Ys, right? Okay. But that is exactly right. There is only one Y for every X. That is a function. Perfect. Okay. You wouldn't believe how, and this is my first year teaching Algebra 1, obviously, but I teach this exact same lesson in both Geometry and Algebra 2, I think. I'm pretty sure. I don't know. I teach it all the time. And how many people still struggle to get that very thing right? Okay. Give the domain and range of the relation. Determine whether the relation is a function. Reagan, what is the domain on 6? Zero and one. All right, Anthony, what is the range? Okay, negative five, negative one, three, and six. You are right. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, I've already called there. Blayton, is this a relation, a function? Okay, he said yes. Um, how do I know it's a function? Ooh, we're looking at the wrong thing, right? Okay, so Caden, go back to your original answer. Can you tell me what your answer was on the previous one? What What did you you told me? You told me that the other one was a function because of what? There's no x that has two y's. All right, Blayton, let's look at those x values there. Is there an x value that has more than one y? Yeah, which x value has more than one y? Yeah, but it's the same x value, correct? All right, what is that x value that has more than one y? Is it zero? Does zero have more than one y? Which one has more than one Y? One. One has more than one Y, right? So, yes, I know that it shows up there three times, but it's the same one, right? So I could just go like that, correct? Right? So that's going to, if I plotted those points on a, coordinate, on a coordinate plane, I would wind up with a vertical line, right? Would it pass a vertical line test? No. So is this a relation? No. Is this relation a function? No, it's not a function. It is a relation, right? So the relation is not a function. I think we're looking for C again here. Okay. Okay. And are we down to... Oh, we still have a few questions left. Okay. Um, does this graph represent a function? Reagan, what do you think? Is that graph a function? Yes. Okay. How could I tell? What would I have to do to make sure that it is a function? Um, I can call on somebody else. Christian, what would I have to do to this to make sure it's a function? Three words I'm looking for. Yep. You just heard it. What is it? Vertical line test. Does it pass? Yes. Okay. Jeremy, you could seem a little less bored. Yes. Oh, this is lame. Like, okay. <laughs> it's not any more exciting for me than it is for you, okay? 
All right, which graph represents a function? Does A represent a function? McEwen, what do you think? Why not? All right, the, the y-axis makes a pretty good vertical line, right? Boom, boom, boom. Okay, Pat, or fails the vertical line test several times. Is C a function, Jordan? It is? Wait, no, 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 never mind, because does not pass the vertical line test. Okay. All right. Let's look at a couple down here. Okay. Hey, that works, right? We'll just carry that on down. All right. Christian, is B a function? No. Uh, let's see. Fraser, is D a function? Yeah. Okay. All right. Do we feel like we've got this down, or do we want to do these last couple of questions? We got it? Yeah. You sure you got it? Okay. All right. If you think you got it, we'll hit stop right there and let you get to work.